When Donald Trump met with survivors and first responders of the massacres in Ohio and Texas yesterday, there was plenty of criticism about his actions both before and after the visits. This president has fanned the flames of white supremacy in this nation. Do I think that we're going to see another mass shooting tomorrow or Friday? Probably, because Washington will not move. As soon as Trump left El Paso, he fired up Twitter and fired back at his critics, starting with the former vice president. He wrote, watching sleepy Joe Biden making his speech, so boring. Then he called both Ohio Senator Brown and Dayton Mayor Whaley a fraud and ultimately took on the entire Democratic Party, writing, the Dems' new weapon is actually their old weapon, one which they never cease to use when they're down or run out of facts, racism. It's Trump's signature move, the best defense, a good offense. But is it the right move, and is he alienating sport in two states crucial to his re-election in 2020? Join me to discuss from my Boston Public Radio co-host and a Boston Globe columnist who can't complain anymore that she never comes on the show, Marjorie Egan. Nice to see you, Marjorie. <laughs> Charlie Chippio, Senior Fellow at the Pioneer Institute, Foreign Policy Director for Governor Romney. Charlie, good to see you. Good and of course, Boston City Council, Lydia Edwards, Councilor, thank you so much for being here. So is Trump at any political risk in terms of how he handles these massacres, well, in three states, not just two states over eight days, or is it another one of these things where nothing changes? Well, I think if you're with his notorious base, nothing changes. But there's such a cruelty to him that's just mounting and mounting. I mean, the, the racism, the, the, the guns, the, 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 the narcissistic attitude when he's talking about himself, you know, and how, the, how everybody loved the president down there. It's just... I mean, and the nonstop, you can't get him out of your head stuff. I, I think it's really, I think he hurts himself every day. Speaking of the bragging, before you go ahead, since Marjorie mentioned, I was going to play this later. There's a video taken by a hospital staff member in El Paso yesterday when Trump was there meeting with staff and some others. I was here three months ago. We made a speech and we had a state, what was the name of the arena? That place was oh, packed, right? And there was some crowd. Thank you for and all And we had twice the number you. outside. And then you had this crazy Beto. Beto had like 400 people <laughs> in a parking lot. Feet away from people who were almost executed and days after others were ex executed. But again, does this, I mean, does it, isn't there been locked into place pretty much on Donald Certainly. Trump? Uh, on Donald Trump, I was going to say there's really two questions here. One, is anything going to change in ter terms of legislation? And then the political question about Donald Trump. Uh, I do think people are largely locked into place about Donald Trump, but, you know, this is going to be an election that's on the margins, and I think there could be some people at the margins who will finally be, you know, this will, he'll finally go too far. See, I think he may have an impact here, and I'm not sure what direction it goes in. I am convinced, and I'm sure I'll be proven wrong by Monday or maybe an hour from now, that he has decided to do something on gun reform. And in one ways, I think that's a pretty forgiving public who may give him a lot of credit for finally acting. But the flip side is, does he lose support from some of his Second Amendment adherents who say, you betrayed us? Do you think nothing changes anything, regardless of what he does? Again, I think with his base, nothing will change. But I think we... Even if he abandons them and, I, and signs some comprehensive gun reform? It, you know, I, I, I just don't. I just don't. But I do think that it, the focus on him is a little too narrow. I How think so? the real question is, are Republicans going to suffer any implication from marrying themselves to him? His inability to get something done or his narcissism eventually going to bleed into them? His not caring and talking about, you know, whether there's a crowd outside next to survivors of a shooting. The question is whether those folks who stand by him in Ohio or in Texas, whether they're going to suffer the consequences if we, if we can't or if folks don't get rid of Trump, are the folks who align themselves with him going to suffer those consequences? I'm really curious about that. Well, you know, a lot of people, even though he won't suffer consequences because right. he's got five and a half years to go, your former boss, Marjorie and I talk every day, what happened to Mitt Romney? What happened you know, to I, Mitt Romney? I don't Romney? know. This was, the, this was the job where I was sort of hoping that the Mitt Romney, who's a smart guy, could emerge who's free from political considerations and actually sort of say what he thinks. He's been awfully quiet, unfortunately, so far. Let's move back to Massachusetts. Charlie Baker's in a bit of a corner, too. He said he knew nothing about the scandal at the registry until the public knew about it. But his registry, as people know at home, failed to process 13,000 notifications, violation notifications from other states, including the most important one of a guy who ended up, should have had his license suspended, drove in New Hampshire and killed, allegedly killed, seven uh, uh, motorcyclists. He's taking criticism, Marjorie, from places where I generally haven't heard it. Uh, Moore Healy, the Attorney General, was sitting here, I think, two nights ago, 
And she's fairly tempered, usually, in her remarks about the governor. Here's what the attorney general had to say. Boy, what a serious case of lack of leadership, lack of management, lack of accountability that apparently may have led to, may have contributed to serious and devastating harm. Lack of leadership by whom, Attorney General? The administration. From Charlie Baker on down? Well, ultimately he's responsible. That is out of the norm for the Attorney General. And of course, this situation is out of the norm. Well, it, it, the RMV may hurt him. I think what's going to hurt him a lot more is is the traffic, the tea, the mess. You know, we had a coworker today who said he was, it took him three hours yeah. to get to, from Randolph to Boston, the commuter rail. If he tried to drive, it was taking him three hours. So mm -hmm. it, it, and every day sitting in traffic, okay, he, so Charlie Baker's got this new lane, whatever it is yeah. he's proposed, and the $18 billion bond bill. But, you know, he's not doing the big picture. And it's like people that don't shovel the snow after a, after a snowstorm and mayor that screws that up. Every day you're sitting in traffic, and I think, if Connects to everybody. Yeah. You're not in an agreement. Yeah, because I think that at the end of the day, we're not talking about just the RMB. We're not talking about just the state troopers. We're talking about a vision. We're talking about an overall plan to help us with infrastructure. And I don't see one from him. And and when we do see his administration get involved, you know, I live in East Boston by the Sumner Tunnel, we see that there's been many times where they cannot execute. But he is, uh, to say he has uh, generated a colossal amount of political capital and goodwill yeah. is an understatement. But when sure. I hear, I mean, even another person who is rarely critical of the governor indirectly here. Here's House Speaker Robert DeLeo in the middle of all this thing. It seemed to be very disturbing to me in terms of what exactly was going on at the registry and the number of people involved higher up. How high did it go, the speaker asks, and the administration, of course, is saying it didn't go any higher. It was just the uh, retired registrar. I think there are a whole lot of questions. He's taking incoming, as the saying goes, yeah, from no, lots I mean, of he, new places. He is. Look, I think that Charlie Baker, for the most part, has been a very good ma uh, manager in his five years. That's sort of his, uh, that's sort of his, you know, that's his signature. It's that he's a good manager. He has been up until now. So when he fails as a manager, you know, it's going to be an issue. And he, he deserves to take some heat for this. What should he do? I mean, one of the things I've liked about Baker is he's taken ownership early in his term on some pretty tough things. He's been pretty upfront about the problems of the Department of Children and Families, and clearly not solved them all, but making, made some strides. Also, at least on paper, saying the right things early on about transportation. What should Baker do now, not only to solve the problems of the taxpayer, but to deal with his political problems, Counselor? Look, I, I just said he needs a vision. and he, I mean, he has the political capital. He has the voice. He has the, the sounding box to sell that vision. You know, regardless of political party, he's been able to cross party lines. So what is the vision? What's the plan out of this to make sure that our infrastructure backs up our growing state? That's yeah, you, all, you a, all you guys are talking about the, bre the broad picture, and you're probably right to be talking. I am RMV fixated, and I have to say, I asked the chairs of the uh, Transportation Committee, we both had them on yesterday, when Charlie Baker said the problem goes back 20 years, one, I talk about not taking ownership, yeah. and secondly, I said to both of them, what is he talking about? Well, what goes back 20 look, years? That, you're right. That's a very bad move, but I, I got to agree with Marjorie. The RMV is a bad thing. The overall transportation infrastructure issue is the much bigger issue, both politically and substantively. The RMV is more of an inside baseball right. kind of thing. I really right. think. I mean, seven dead people. Yeah, I seven know, dead I know, people. I know, but the bigger thing at the RMV is, you know, seven days to get your driver's license. It's the interaction with the public. Well, they've with dealt the with that, but that's part well, of it. Here's what a Charlie Baker should do. He should raise the gas tax. They haven't raised it since 1993. Say so we're going to raise the gas tax, and we are going to be really serious about fixing transportation. They can start by cleaning the bathrooms and the commuter rail. <laughs> How <laughs> hard is that? Marjorie always gets down to bread and butter <laughs> issues. As for another guy who's forced to play defense, Boston Mayor Marty Walsh says he's, quote, surprised and disappointed after a jury returned guilty verdicts against two of his top aides in the Boston Colon corruption case. Both his tourism director and chief of intergovernmental affairs resigned after they were convicted of extortion. One was convicted of conspiracy for pressuring the music festival to hire union workers in 2014. Their attorneys are now asking the judge to throw out the case, but if the charges stand, the convictions stand, they both face up to 20 years in prison. In a statement, the mayor said, I've always believed that their hearts were in the right place. We have taken several measures at the city of Boston to ensure that every employee has the right tools and training to perform at the highest ethical standards, which has always been my expectation. Is that the right response? 
I'm going to add to that saying I believe their hearts were in the right place and I don't believe they did anything wrong. You don't think they committed? You said that to I, me in 2016. I said that. But a I've jury decided they committed crimes. That's correct. And I disagree with that jury. I personally do not understand how you can have extortion and not receive a personal benefit. And I think that it sets a dangerous precedent for those of us who are in the mix trying to negotiate, trying to make sure our constituents get the benefits that they need and bringing people to the table. I don't know how else to move in a way that allows for me to advocate for my community if and I receive no benefits for it and yet so I you think face, he should have been even bolder in his response to the verdict I think he should absolutely say that that those uh, that Tim and Ken, and Ken did nothing wrong how about you you buy that well I think that for the regular person two years ago we had cell phone video of Teamsters outside the uh, Steel and Rye in is that the Milton. Top Chef thing? That was the teams you? going after the yeah. Top Chef thing. And you had, you had a cell phone video of a guy going like this, looking very threatening toward a woman, calling her the C word, calling somebody else a towel head, th allegedly threatening to, to smash in the face of the star of that show. They're acquitted. Mm -hmm. So you look at them getting acquitted, and then you look at this with a guy from Boston Calling himself said there was no explicit threat. So you agree with the counselor? Well... So does I, that mean I think this is another one of these things. If you didn't like Marty Walsh because you thought he was too, it was the head of the building trades in Boston, then maybe you're going to be upset. About, you, you, you're going to be thrilled about this. But I think attitudes about private sector unions have changed. Remember the stop and shop strike. Of course. Remember everybody stopping. And I think it's finally dawned on people that union uh, negotiations help people earn a living wage. And I don't think we felt that way. Do you want to make this ago. unanimous here? No. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> union negotiations do help people earn a living wage. Absolutely. Unfortunately, in Massachusetts, I'll say the same thing I said on a radio show recently. Look, the, the nexus between big labor and Tammany Hall is the very core of Massachusetts politics. The, their Even power, if they receive no power, personal benefit, as look, counselor said. Look, they, they received no personal benefit. What they did was say, you got to hire people that you don't need to hire, union or non-union, in order to get this. Price. So should I mean, Marty Walsh pay a price for this? Look. I don't care whether Marty Walsh pays a price for it or not. I'm just saying that anything that can start to, to break this unbreakable nexus between big labor and mass in government in Massachusetts is going to help working people. No. You want to respond to that? Yeah, no, and I think that there's a nexus that if you're going to talk about uh, a, a relationship, I, w I, I can't believe we're not talking about how corporations and lobbyists and their ability to walk into our offices and, and meet with us and talk with us about their corporate interests. They absolutely have a nexus and direct connection to, uh, to, to government. So I, I and they're think not that, being well, and they're not, not at all. And nationally, not I think all. you're absolutely right. No, I think locally, too, having been no. in the mix and being right now as a politician, you see the impact when they come in and they talk and they move and they walk. And I mean, a perfect example is Airbnb and what they did to my colleague Michelle Wu and how they came in there and literally attacked her. We received thousands of emails from a corporation who simply did not want to be regulated. I I've never seen that response from a, from a labor uh, union. We ever. only have a couple of seconds left. I figure I'd add a fourth guy who's on the defensive end of the mix. Mm -hmm. He's from your favorite station, <laughs> Fox News. Here he is. It's actually not a real problem in America. The combined membership of every white supremacist organization in this country would be able to fit inside a college football stadium? This is a hoax. Just like the Russia hoax. It's a conspiracy theory used to divide the country and keep a hold on power. Do you want to channel Margaret Sullivan? I think Margaret Sullivan had it absolutely right. If he's looking for white supremacists, she should look in the mirror and look at himself. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they're like the white supremacist station, aren't they? His, her ex <laughs> actual quote was, Carlson claims that white supremacy is a hoax, is easy to prove wrong, just watch his show. Mm -hmm. Councillor Edwards, it's great to see you. Thank you that. so much for your time. Thanks. I appreciate it. Margaret, I will see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you very much.